Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. Trilobites have a long history in Chimere. Though the exact dates of the first harvests are not known with great precision, and it may well have taken several harvests before Earth life really took off, but some of the earliest Terran fossils in Chimere belong to the trilobites. Though four clades were harvested and thrived through the first few million years of Chimere's terraforming, most trilobites went extinct during the planet's first recorded mass extinction, as plant and fungal colonization of the land released unprecedented limiting nutrients into the waterways and triggered a bloom of magic and algae that turned coastal waters into a toxic sludge. Though protid trilobites were the great survivors of this extinction, theorized to have survived because of a more derived growth cycle, the harpids, as humble decomposers, were an uncommon yet critical element in cleaning up the oceans and making it possible for animals in future harvests to establish a new dynasty of Earth life. Protids went on to become a staple of the marine ecosystems. Despite their services in making the shallows inhabitable, the harpids of the coastal seaways were outcompeted by the protids, which dominated these niches throughout modern times. They lost the coasts, but in the abyss, harpid trilobites would go on to establish a dynasty of their own that persists to this day. Though the Assembly has yet to conduct manned submersible expeditions and surveys of the deep oceans, there have been a few remote devices successfully exploring the abyss and strange creatures washing up from the depths that the Assembly has been able to paint a perhaps startling picture. Animal life in Chimere's terrestrial and coastal habitats generally evolve from analogous animals on Earth, and being replicated in a familiar habitat gives incoming animals a substantial competitive advantage. The portal's territory is restricted to coastal and surface ocean territory. It has no dominion over the deep oceans of Chimere, so it has never harvested from our abyss. Because of this, Chimere's deep oceans are packed with entirely novel lineages. Some of their abyssal companions are familiar to us. The Chimeran sleeper shark, for example, is an extremely close relative of the Greenland shark and is presumed to have been harvested in the Pleistocene alongside narwhals and poor beagles. These sharks may have been best known as deep sea fish, but they often hunt higher in the water column at night, which is likely how they were harvested. Not all abyssal creatures are full-time residents, which is likely how many of the deep sea creatures in Chimere got their current niches. Most of Chimere's deep sea residents, however, appear to have had coastal ancestors. The krakens of the abyss, for example, much more closely resemble shallow water ammonites and squid than the deep denizens we find in our own oceans today. A lot of the crustaceans have closer ties to shallow water ancestors as well. The harpids are one such a lineage, or at least that is what the assembly theorizes. The abyss of our world is not produced a particularly robust fossil record that we can access, to say the least, much less fossil record in the deep oceans of Chimere. But the abyssal harpids common in Chimere are believed to have evolved after they were introduced to the planet, perhaps to escape from the more competitive coastal biomes. Whatever the reason and timeline of their entry in the abyss, by species number and population, they have clearly thrived. The deep oceans near the known world are surprisingly prolific and diversely populated. The picardio caline tectonic plate broke off from Kaishel and traveled up to the known world extremely quickly, with this continental plate sliding over the oceanic crust below. This leveled the oceanic plate, no doubt bringing Armageddon to any endemic fauna. However, 
Desolation often begets rebirth, and the volcanism and fracturing of all those tectonic movements have caused considerable nutrients to be released into these deep regions. Some Terran microfauna is found deep and has helped form the basis of a food web, though it is the native magic which is most abundant. The stretch of oceanic crust between Picardia and the Great Kelleen Sea and Kai Shell to the south is teeming with magic, which provides the foundation for a thriving abyssal ecosystem, which through upwells also contributes to the general productivity of Chimera's oceans, spread thanks to the rotation of the currents. The collapse and decomposition of pelagic animals certainly contributes to the abyss, as whale falls do in our own oceans today, though it must be said that even the few surveys of the, by the Assembly have conducted suggest the deep ocean ecosystems are considerably more productive in this region of Chimere than in other places of the planet and most of our own. At the heart of this thriving ecosystem are its primary decomposers, the Harpid Trilobites. Other clades have come and gone, but the Harpids have been a staple for a long time. They sift through the sediment on the ocean floor, gathering up anything edible along the way. While there is one species in the known world trawling the floors of the Great Killeen Sea, the Hoofhead Trilobite, Tachyplumimus hades, most species in this genus, prefer the deeper waters. The Kaleen Sea Hoofed is an extremely abundant species in the Kaleen Sea, preferring these cooler and slightly deeper waters than the inland sea to the north. They are detritivores, far outnumbering the horseshoe crabs which occupy a similar niche. Hoofhead trilobites are a staple in the diets of many Kaleen, especially considering the much greater amount of quality meat in their heads compared to the protid lineages. Some assembly researchers have suggested that this may be a harpid which came up from the abyss, but it may be from an undiscovered lineages of coastal residents. The same species is also found in the coastal waters of Kaishel and southern Kairul, though it is believed that this may be due to the larva being carried on the great currents cycling between the known world and these continents, rather than both coming up from the abyss. The abyssal hoofhead is a species of Tachyplumimus, which is most common in the sea floor. There's a fair bit of genetic interchange between these and the hoofheads of the Kaleen Sea, no doubt because their offspring get mixed in the currents, though the two populations have a preference for much different waters and are distinct in shape enough that most regard them as separate species. The abyssal hoofhead is, at least according to the albeit limited surveys, the most abundant trilobite in the abyss just south of the known world, and by a considerable margin. This abundance unsurprisingly makes them a reliable diet for specialized predators. While most predators wouldn't turn down the opportunity if it arose, the waka kraut is a holocephalid cartilaginous fish that specializes in trilobites, specifically the abyssal hoofhead. Their rostrum is primarily an organ of detection, though it serves as a useful tool in flipping trilobites. Once flipped, the harpid will usually curl up. This renders them safe from most predators. The, the walker kraut is counting on it. Their beak-shaped teeth are laterally compressed and can slice between the gaps of harpid armor, so they actually prefer a rolled-up harpid. Some species of other harpids have developed spikes to hinder this attack, though the hoofhead has not. Perhaps their abundance mitigates the few loss to predation, though it has been suggested that one of the two is a relatively recent migrant to this habitat, so perhaps they have not participated enough of an ecological arms race for the abyssal hoofhead to counter its specialized predator. The abyss has a reputation as a timeless place, but the reality is that it is a dynamic habitat, and it's entirely possible that the hoofhead of the Kaleen Sea, not the abyssal cousin, is a more ancient relative, and the new arrival of the abyssal hoofhead could not only explain the seemingly lack of defense against the most common predator, but also a shockingly high population, which often occurs when an invasive species initially thrives. 
The Goliath Hoofhead, or Ishaluk's Looks Slippers, as they are called by many Kaleen who occasionally encounter them, are perhaps the largest trilobite in Chimere. Sheer flank of the seagrass meadows are larger, though the largest documented kraken slippers are heavier. It is probable that the known sample size doesn't include the largest specimens in the abyss. Even larger examples are not out of the question. These travel along the sea floor, gathering up debris. Size makes them efficient travelers, and sensitive antennae means that they are often the first to arrive at a whale fall. Though slow growing, the largest members are immune to predation, save for the occasional determined horned kraken, and even then their size is usually sufficient defense. They have been found in the Great Kaleen Sea, although it must be said that these are quite rare travelers. The most derived of this clade is the beetle trilobites. While most harpids are noted for their horseshoe cephalon shape, this clade has a head which entirely envelops their bodies. This is an extension of the cephalon, not a fusion of their entire bodies, and indeed the underside shows a more basal configuration. There's a lot of overlap in their thorax plates, preventing the shearing jaws of the waka kraut from cutting them open. Though not as abundant as abyssal hoofheads, there are many species of this clade and they appear to be more stable in population and resistant to predation. Some are burrowing, but most species like the giant beetle trilobite are safe to walk along the sea floor in search of anything organic for them to consume. Though far less familiar to chimerans as the protid trilobites and not as diverse in niche and body plan overall, the harpids have a broad distribution, and even a brief survey shows they are a staple of the deep oceans. In this environment, unwelcoming to outsiders, they have made an enduring place and name for themselves. Cheers to the Siren Lord for sponsoring this episode. While I covered harpids briefly in the Trilobite episode, it was exciting to revisit them and give them their due in terms of biodiversity beyond the known world and their importance to the abyssal ecosystem. Thanks again to the Siren Lord, to my Patreon patrons for your support, and thank you for watching. March is going to be a full series on crocodiles and other pseudosuchians in Chimere, similar to the Proboscidean and Megaraptoran series I've done in the past, so get ready for a full month on nothing but crocs. Cheers, folks!